In this listening test, you will hear a total of seven texts. Each text will be read twice. In the booklet, you will see the questions and the three possible answers to the questions. Only one of the three answers is correct. Choose the correct answer and shade your answers one, two, three on the optical sheet at any time during the test. Open your book now. The test is about to begin. Listen to text one and answer question one and two. You will hear a radio advertisement. Snow in Singapore. That's right. Kitty Ice Castle is finally here in Singapore. You can start visiting our cool retreat this month from 19th November. We'll have our grand opening celebration on 3rd December. Visitors will be treated to a warm welcome by a spectacular marching band at the car park outside the Ice Castle. The usual ticket price is $10 for children and $25 for adults. For the whole month of the grand opening, all tickets are at half the usual price. To top it all, one child gets in free with every two adults. Once inside our winter wonderland, you can skate while viewing grand ice sculptures. The theme of the sculptures changes monthly. For this month, we will feature beautiful wild animals. Next month, you can see giant plants and flowers. For the new year, visitors will be greeted by sculptures of planets. Visit us in the month of your favorite theme, or better still, come every month. Question 1. John's parents are taking him and his little sister to Kitty Ice Castle during their primary school holidays in December. Which picture shows their ticket purchase? Question 2. Which poster correctly shows the display at Kitty Ice Castle during the grand opening? Listen to text one again. Snow in Singapore. That's right. Kitty Ice Castle is finally here in Singapore. You can start visiting our cool retreat this month from 19th November. We'll have our grand opening celebration on 3rd December. Visitors will be treated to a warm welcome by a spectacular marching band at the car park outside the Ice Castle. The usual ticket price is $10 for children and $25 for adults. For the whole month of the grand opening, all tickets are at half the usual price. To top it all, one child gets in free with every two adults. Once inside our winter wonderland, you can skate while viewing grand ice sculptures. The theme of the sculptures changes monthly. For this month, we will feature beautiful wild animals. Next month, you can see giant plants and flowers. For the new year, visitors will be greeted by sculptures of planets. Visit us in the month of your favorite theme, or better still, come every month. Listen to text two and answer question three and four. You will hear about a visit to a shopping center. Linda was waiting at Sunshine Shopping Center when her friend James finally appeared. James, you're so late. I've been outside this ice cream shop for the past 20 minutes. I'm sorry. I was quite early for our appointment, so I went to the mega bookstore. I totally forgot the time. Are you keen to go there? James asked. Yeah, perhaps another day. Let's go watch a movie instead, Linda suggested. She dragged James to the cinema, but there were no interesting movies available. It's almost lunch. Don't forget we are meeting our classmate Farah at the cafe, Linda said. As they were walking there, James noticed a gift shop. Let's go to the shop, James said. I need to get a keychain and pencil case. After completing their purchase, they left the shop happily. James said excitedly, the bookmark was such a bargain. Glad I got it instead of the nice water bottle. It was so hard to decide. It's a pity you didn't see any pencil case that you liked, Linda remarked. Right, but a new bag for school more than makes up for it. Shall we go to the indoor garden now? James replied, Let's meet Farah first and then go there, Linda said. They had a great time together when they finally met up and visited the places they had planned. Question 3. Which of the three lines shows the route James took in the shopping center? Question 4. What were the items bought at the gift shop? 
Listen to text two again. Linda was waiting at Sunshine Shopping Center when her friend James finally appeared. James, you're so late. I've been outside this ice cream shop for the past 20 minutes. I'm sorry. I was quite early for our appointment, so I went to the mega bookstore. I totally forgot the time. Are you keen to go there? James asked. Yeah, perhaps another day. Let's go watch a movie instead, Linda suggested. She dragged James to the cinema, but there were no interesting movies available. It's almost lunch. Don't forget we are meeting our classmate Farah at the cafe, Linda said. As they were walking there, James noticed a gift shop. Let's go to the shop, James said. I need to get a keychain and pencil case. After completing their purchase, they left the shop happily. James said excitedly, the bookmark was such a bargain. Glad I got it instead of the nice water bottle. It was so hard to decide. It's a pity you didn't see any pencil case that you liked, Linda remarked. Right, but a new bag for school more than makes up for it. Shall we go to the indoor garden now? James replied. Let's meet Farah first and then go there, Linda said. They had a great time together when they finally met up and visited the places they had planned. Listen to text 3 and answer question 5, 6, and 7. You will hear a conversation between two friends. Hi, Amy. I haven't seen you since the last charity run in our neighborhood estate. What are you doing here? Hi, Raj. I'm getting some things for a picnic at the East Coast Beach. Oh, you may want to get an inflatable pillow. Lying down on your picnic mat at the sandy beach will be so comfortable. You're lucky that this supermarket has everything. In terms of comfort, I'd prefer a portable fan. That might not protect you from the sun or rain the way an umbrella does. You're right. Besides, I wouldn't want any uninvited guest swooping down on my food. I'll also buy some plastic bags to keep any leftover food. This will keep ants and rats away. Of course, I won't forget the insect repellent. Great! You should really consider using the reusable containers you have from home to keep your food instead. This way, you can save the environment too. That's a good idea. Question 5. Which picture shows where the conversation took place? Question 6. Which picture shows the uninvited guest? Question 7. Which picture shows the items Amy and Raj agreed on for the picnic? Listen to text 3 again. Hi, Amy. I haven't seen you since the last charity run in our neighborhood estate. What are you doing here? Hi, Raj. I'm getting some things for a picnic at the East Coast Beach. Oh, you may want to get an inflatable pillow. Lying down on your picnic mat at the sandy beach will be so comfortable. You're lucky that this supermarket has everything. In terms of comfort, I'd prefer a portable fan. That might not protect you from the sun or rain the way an umbrella does. You're right. Besides, I wouldn't want any uninvited guest swooping down on my food. I'll also buy some plastic bags to keep any leftover food. This will keep ants and rats away. Of course, I won't forget the insect repellent. Great! You should really consider using the reusable containers you have from home to keep your food instead. This way, you can save the environment too. That's a good idea. Listen to text 4 and answer question 8, 9, and 10. You will hear a school announcement. Our school will be celebrating the annual Friendship Week with special activities for students this year. Outside the library, there will be a booth selling gifts. This year, we are replacing the colored highlighters with ballpoint pens as more students bought these last year. You'll be happy with our wide selection of flowers on sale too. Add on a balloon or soft toy to your purchase and we'll deliver the gifts to your schoolmates in a colorful bag. All sale profits will go towards the school improvement fund. In the hall, a photo booth will be set up. 
bring your own props and pose in as many different ways you wish to get that fun shot. Our photographers will give ideas too. For the last activity, you can take a video of you and your friends shaking hands. This is a polite form of greeting when we meet people. Do you know, in ancient Rome, the handshake was often used as a symbol of friendship and trust? Upload the video on the school's website and stand a chance to win attractive prizes. The more creative, the better. Question 8. Which items are not sold at the booth outside the library? 1. Highlighters and balloons. 2. Flowers and soft toys. 3. Bags and highlighters. Question 9. At the photo booth, students can 1. Take photographs on their own. 2. Get advice on ways to pose. 3. Use the props provided. Question 10. Why is the competition a meaningful activity for the celebration? 1. Handshakes have been a sign of trust since ancient Rome. 2. It is polite to shake hands when people greet one another. 3. Making handshake videos allows students to be creative. Listen to text 4 again. Our school will be celebrating the annual Friendship Week with special activities for students this year. Outside the library there will be a booth selling gifts. This year, we are replacing the colored highlighters with ballpoint pens as more students bought these last year. You'll be happy with our wide selection of flowers on sale too. Add on a balloon or soft toy to your purchase and we'll deliver the gifts to your schoolmates in a colorful bag. All sale profits will go towards the school improvement fund. In the hall, a photo booth will be set up. Bring your own props and pose in as many different ways you wish to get that fun shot. Our photographers will give ideas too. For the last activity, you can take a video of you and your friends shaking hands. This is a polite form of greeting when we meet people. Do you know, in ancient Rome, the handshake was often used as a symbol of friendship and trust? Upload the video on the school's website and stand a chance to win attractive prizes. The more creative, the better. Listen to text 5 and answer question 11, 12, and 13. You will hear a TV host interviewing a project leader. Thank you, Christina, for sharing about your community projects, which aims to spread the joy of reading to remote villages. What made you think of such an idea? There are many villages that are located in high mountains with narrow trails that are impossible for cars to reach. Being able to bring the world to them in the form of books is therefore an important task. I thought of a practical way, which is to load books on the backs of donkeys. We call them the book mules. Do the villagers look forward to seeing the book mules? For sure. Anyone who is not out working in the fields will be waiting for us. The children in the school are particularly excited. They cheer when they see the animals and help unstrap their load hastily. Personally, I find it rewarding that my idea of a four-legged library can give so much joy. Library with legs. That's awesome. Are there plans to expand the project? Now that the living conditions are improved with electricity and water supply reaching the villages, we can bring laptops on the mules to help the villagers contact merchants to sell their vegetables and fruit. The newly built hospitals will be better equipped when our mules transport medicines to them. How do you think our radio listeners can contribute? We certainly need more mules, but I'll get round that problem soon. You can give your old books a new lease of life by sending them to us. We are not in need of money as much as these donations. Eventually, we hope to better the living conditions of these villagers and boost their incomes. Question 11. How can we tell that the villagers appreciated the book mules? 1. 
they named the animals four-legged library. Two, they welcomed the animals as they unloaded the books. Three, they stopped all their work in the fields to wait for the animals. Question 12. Which statement is true about the plans of the community project? 1. Provide electricity and water supply to the villages. 2. Connect villagers with more business partners. 3. Build hospitals with better equipment. Question 13. What is one aim of the interview? 1. Request donations of books. 2. Boost incomes of the villagers. 3. Appeal for money to buy mules. Listen to text 5 again. Thank you, Christina, for sharing about your community projects, which aims to spread the joy of reading to remote villages. What made you think of such an idea? There are many villages that are located in high mountains with narrow trails that are impossible for cars to reach. Being able to bring the world to them in the form of books is therefore an important task. I thought of a practical way, which is to load books on the backs of donkeys. We call them the book mules. Do the villagers look forward to seeing the book mules? For sure. Anyone who is not out working in the fields will be waiting for us. The children in the school are particularly excited. They cheer when they see the animals and help unstrap their load hastily. Personally, I find it rewarding that my idea of a four-legged library can give so much joy. Library with legs. That's awesome. Are there plans to expand the project? Now that the living conditions are improved with electricity and water supply reaching the villages, we can bring laptops on the mules to help the villagers contact merchants to sell their vegetables and fruit. The newly built hospitals will be better equipped when our mules transport medicines to them. How do you think our radio listeners can contribute? We certainly need more mules, but I'll get round that problem soon. You can give your old books a new lease of life by sending them to us. We are not in need of money as much as these donations. Eventually, we hope to better the living conditions of these villagers and boost their incomes. Listen to text 6 and answer question 14, 15, 16, and 17. You will hear a story about an innkeeper and his wife. In a town, there lived an innkeeper and his wife. When they heard that the princess would be stopping at their inn for lunch, they scrambled to cook up a storm. When the princess arrived, the innkeeper quickly sat her at a grand table. However, he scowled when five soldiers sat down with her. They were fierce-looking and well-built. Disregarding their presence, the innkeeper carried a bowl of steaming stew and proudly placed it before the princess, saying, You must be tired and hungry, your highness. We've prepared a savory stew for you. The innkeeper and his wife knew that one kind word from her about their stew would bring in customers from far and wide. The princess took a look at the stew and asked, What are my soldiers going to eat? The innkeeper replied, Your Highness, we are poor people. Our cupboards are almost empty and we can't afford to feed them. Slowly, the princess tasted the stew and said, This needs more salt. Right away, Your Highness. Retrieving the bowl, the innkeeper hustled to the kitchen with his wife. A moment later, they returned with the salted stew. The princess took a small sip and frowned. She said, Oh, now it's too salty. Thinking on their feet, the innkeeper and his wife poured the stew into a larger pot and quickly added more carrots and potatoes to make the stew less salty. They grinned because they believed they had the perfect stew. Unfortunately, when the princess tasted it, she complained that it had too little spice in it. After the couple added more spice, she remarked once more that the stew was too spicy. Eager to please the fickle princess, the couple poured the stew into an even bigger pot and threw in more ingredients. When the princess tried the stew yet again, she took a second spoonful. The innkeeper and his wife were overjoyed. Finally, the princess was satisfied and said with a big smile, Innkeeper, I believe that there's enough stew to go around now. The innkeeper and his wife lowered their heads and fell silent. 
Question 14. Why did the innkeeper and his wife not serve the soldiers? 1. They felt that the soldiers were unimportant people. 2. They were frightened by the strong and fierce soldiers. 3. They thought that the princess was hungrier than her men. Question 15. Why did the innkeeper and his wife first use a larger pot to add more ingredients? 1. To follow the princess's order to impress her. 2. To prepare stew for more people. 3. To make the stew less salty. Question 16. What would the innkeeper hope to hear in the end? 1. Innkeeper, I believe that there's enough stew to go around now. 2. Innkeeper, how do you make such tasty stew? 3. Innkeeper, your stew has lots of spice. Question 17. How had the innkeeper's feeling changed by the end of the story? 1. Excited to dismay. 2. Eager to satisfied. 3. Proud to fearful. Listen to text 6 again. In a town, there lived an innkeeper and his wife. When they heard that the princess would be stopping at their inn for lunch, they scrambled to cook up a storm. When the princess arrived, the innkeeper quickly sat her at a grand table. However, he scowled when five soldiers sat down with her. They were fierce-looking and well-built. Disregarding their presence, the innkeeper carried a bowl of steaming stew and proudly placed it before the princess, saying, You must be tired and hungry, your highness. We've prepared a savory stew for you. The innkeeper and his wife knew that one kind word from her about their stew would bring in customers from far and wide. The princess took a look at the stew and asked, What are my soldiers going to eat? The innkeeper replied, Your Highness, we are poor people. Our cupboards are almost empty and we can't afford to feed them. Slowly, the princess tasted the stew and said, This needs more salt. Right away, Your Highness. Retrieving the bowl, the innkeeper hustled to the kitchen with his wife. A moment later, they returned with the salted stew. The princess took a small sip and frowned. She said, oh, now it's too salty. Thinking on their feet, the innkeeper and his wife poured the stew into a larger pot and quickly added more carrots and potatoes to make the stew less salty. They grinned because they believed they had the perfect stew. Unfortunately, when the princess tasted it, she complained that it had too little spice in it. After the couple added more spice, she remarked once more that the stew was too spicy. Eager to please the fickle princess, the couple poured the stew into an even bigger pot and threw in more ingredients. When the princess tried the stew yet again, she took a second spoonful. The innkeeper and his wife were overjoyed. Finally, the princess was satisfied and said with a big smile. Innkeeper, I believe that there's enough stew to go around now. The innkeeper and his wife lowered their heads and fell silent. Listen to text 7 and answer question 18, 19, and 20. You will hear a talk. There are many types of journals that people keep. The most commonly kept journal is one where people record exciting events such as their holiday adventures. There is a lesser known journal where people keep track of New Year resolutions and achievements so as to stay focused and motivated. One type that is gaining lots of followers both young and old around the world, is the gratitude journal. It simply documents the things for which people are grateful. Many people who keep gratitude journals claim that it helps keep them calm amidst daily demands. Other than that, it can give them new perspectives on what they truly appreciate in life. When they are sad, they read through the journals to be mindful of the good things in life. The practice of recalling happy thoughts can also help boost memory. Despite the benefits, not many people keep journals. For one, many people think that to write journals, you need some kind of expensive and fanciful diary. In reality, you can use any notebook or even pieces of paper. Also, many people think the routine requires time and determination. In fact, Journaling can be as quick as jotting down a thought when it strikes you. However, do get to it before you get distracted by your handphone. People assume that journaling is all about writing when you can actually draw pictures and stick figures to express your ideas. 
You are only limited by your own imagination. Question 18. Which type of journal is least popular? 1. Those about grateful moments. 2. Those about exciting adventures. 3. Those about goals and successes. Question 19. Which is not a benefit of gratitude journaling? 1. Managing stress. 2. Avoiding sadness. 3. Improving memory. Question 20. Why do some people find it hard to keep journals? 1. They think writing requires discipline. 2. They are unable to focus on their writing. 3. They have limited imagination when writing. Listen to text 7 again. There are many types of journals that people keep. The most commonly kept journal is one where people record exciting events such as their holiday adventures. There is a lesser-known journal where people keep track of New Year resolutions and achievements so as to stay focused and motivated. One type that is gaining lots of followers, both young and old around the world, is the gratitude journal. It simply documents the things for which people are grateful. Many people who keep gratitude journals claim that it helps keep them calm amidst daily demands. Other than that, it can give them new perspectives on what they truly appreciate in life. When they are sad, they read through the journals to be mindful of the good things in life. The practice of recalling happy thoughts can also help boost memory. Despite the benefits, not many people keep journals. For one, many people think that to write journals, you need some kind of expensive and fanciful diary. In reality, you can use any notebook or even pieces of paper. Also, many people think the routine requires time and determination. In fact, journaling can be as quick as jotting down a thought when it strikes you. However, do get to it before you get distracted by your handphone. People assume that journaling is all about writing when you can actually draw pictures and stick figures to express your ideas. You are only limited by your own imagination.